Hello and welcome to Postgres FM, a weekly show about all things PostgreSQL. I am Michael, founder of PG Mustard. This is my co-host Nikolai, founder of Postgres AI. Hey Nikolai, what are we talking about? Hi Michael, uh, your choice, I cannot even name it, so please help me. Yeah, let me read out the request. So this one's based on a listener suggestion, so thank you so much for that one. They were asking about special considerations for databases that are used in a read-only mode all day and then get an update at night with additional data. So they are asking us to focus on, well, so they suggested the focus therefore should be on performance during the read only times. So yeah, I think this is fascinating. I've only seen it a couple of times myself. So um, I'm going to be approaching data, it. Right? Pardon coronavirus, me? coronavirus data in, in, in Great Britain, you, you mentioned this example. So we yeah. like reload data nightly every day at night, for example, and then people just use the frozen state of data just to Yeah, explore. so I'm, I remember reading about that one. I'm not actually sure that strictly counts as one of these cases. I, I, I'm not sure, for example, if they take any downtime or any time between updates. Um, I'm not even sure if this person is, is no, let's, assuming let's they agree have downtime or no. In the very beginning, let's agree, we don't consider any downtime as uh, reasonable for us. I, I just, Interesting. I like I'm it. Ju I just quit if someone suggests downtime. I just quit. I don't work with, with them anymore at all. Like, we don't it makes consider... it more interesting. It makes this more interesting too. Right. right. Let's consider we don't allow downtime, but we consider all data changes are, happen during specific time period of day or week. Yep periodically and then we have frozen state of data and want to our want our read only queries to be as fast as possible like the fastest possible like this is our goal sounds perfect so we yeah can, kind of read only like um, that's yeah. how i'm thinking about the i know it's not read only but that's how i'm thinking about i think topic. we can split uh to two parts of this problem uh first is how to make uh, read only queries as fast as possible mm -hmm. and second how to refresh or update data or change data within specified period of time. So then we have again the fastest possible read only queries, right? So perfect. I have my notes organized exactly the same way. Oh, okay, good, good. So we, uh, which would you like to start with? I'm thinking the first one. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't know about you, but I thought about this much from like a perspective of why why do writes and updates and inserts, why do it, inserts, updates and deletes, why do they cause problems? And therefore, what problems don't we have? And therefore, what can we do differently? Um, so do you have it? Do you want to kind of go try and think of what the highest impact things are first or just start listing things that we can we can do? Let's uh, do it in a random order and then try to summarize and find uh, the most impactful ideas. Sounds perfect. So some of mine are being okay. performance, being performance focused myself. Um, naturally, the first thing I went to was thinking about indexes. So we have in one of the biggest downsides of creating lots of indexes in general is it is right overhead. So one of the things I was thinking was maybe the dial shifts a little bit towards we can afford a few more indexes than we would in a heavily updated system. Um, so that, that felt like maybe a slight shift uh, when people are thinking like, what are my natural instincts? And maybe you need to go against those a little bit or, or change the, change the balance there a little bit, but not just. Um, so you basically pro propose to index all the columns. <laughs> <laughs> well, it crossed my mind that there's a few things like, deep in the weeds of indexes that might also be interesting. So well, for, firstly, may, maybe more indexes make sense. Secondly, maybe more multi-column index makes sense. So we, uh, like index only scans don't have to be um, like we, we don't end up getting, I think you, you mentioned this pr previously, but the heap fetches number, right? When we're, we're not right, going to have to different things. First, let, let, let me comment on this yeah. here. So first of all, in my practice, I rarely see, um, like I, I see it, but quite not not frequently at all that people uh, try to minimize the number of indexes. Very often, 
most often I, I, I just come and see a lot of unused, redundant indexes. We had an episode about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is what people usually do. Like they do more indexes than needed already. Right. So, so this, but I agree with you totally. Like, uh, definitely we could afford more indexes if we, if we know we are not going to, uh, run updates, uh, writes during daytime. But I don't think, uh, it's like in, in practice, uh, it, like it, it will prevent someone to create from creating uh, another index in different situations. Sometimes, like we have uh, a append only table, and people try to avoid indexes at all, or we'll just have a single index. It's, it's, it happens, but in many cases, people just create a lot of indexes anyway. So this, but so, so this, I agree, but it's hard to measure. And uh, I think uh, the second um, item you mentioned, it's probably the most interesting one. Uh, to to reach index only scan run faster due to hip fetches zero. If you see the plan, hip fetches zero means that you're good. But before explaining this, probably we should remind those who are not Postgres experts yet um, how MVCC works in a few words, right? So every update, uh, every delete is just marks. Uh, your tuple as uh, potentially like as, as dead, but then some uh, some transactions probably might still need it. So and then AutoVacuum uh, cleans those tuples and marks also index entries as dead as well, and also cleans them. And uh, if we have a lot of deletes and updates, not inserts, deletes and updates, we probably start to have bloat issues in both table and indexes. Right, and before even considering index-only scans, probably we should think about like more fundamental problem like bloat and dead tuples. Right, so so what do you think? Like if we say before our uh, read-only period starts, we would like to vacuum everything, right, and and. And probably get rid of bloat, so we repack everything. I, I, if we have a lot of time, this is we, this would be ideal. We get rid of any bloat, and we know that all uh, dead tuples uh, already deleted for auto vacuum. There is no work in terms of regular vacuuming, right? Yes, I think so. that's a really big one actually. So if if we because we have to keep it online, I think the I think repack repacking makes sense pre-vacuum, right? There's no point doing a vacuum and then repacking everything. Or is it uh, am I misunderstanding? Uh, let's distinguish repacking indexes and repacking uh, tables. Uh, indexes, it's like re-index, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. the state will be fresh. Uh, repacking tables, it's j like uh, vacuum full recreation, almost. So it's, yeah. uh, again, basically repacking means you... Mm, just perform something like dump restore or vacuum full and whole database if you repack everything. And uh, it's good. Uh, we have fresh state. We don't have dead tuples and nothing to do for auto vacuum or vacuum except just one thing, the state of visibility maps, right? Well, do, will Which they brings change us to, during... Okay. I was to, thinking of suggesting like, uh, potentially... Um, Potentially, I've missed something, but I could imagine this being one of the few exceptions to the rule of not disabling auto vacuum. I wondered if running our vacuum at the end of our, uh, just yeah. before the read period starts. Um, to build visibility it, maps, exactly. To update, yes, exactly. As a, as a final step, I was actually thinking vacuum analyze because I'd, uh, we might have added a lot of data. Well, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So run, so do all of our, in fact, we've jumped to the second topic of like the, I guess the bulk loading, but it's important for that, um, for the index only scan optimization. So the, the final step I was thinking would be a, a manual, also not manual, but like automated vacuum analyze, not via auto vacuum. Explicit vacuum, right? Explicit. That's a better word for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and which then is also good need to. in yeah. newer Postgres versions because it can process indexes in parallel, unlike AutoVacuum. AutoVacuum still cannot do it. It's always uh, processing t 
table and all in, in its indexes using just one worker. If, if we use explicit vacuum, we can do it slightly faster. Yeah, and, and the point, I guess the thing that ties this back to the query performance is that that final vacuum marks pages visible or uh, all, all basically visible. updates the visible, exactly, updates the visibility map so that um, post, like when, when Postgres is planning queries and when it's doing index only scans, because we're not getting any new data, because we're not getting any updates, right. any deletes um, during that period, we can't right. have any of those marked um updated right right so visibility map so so right uh, the first thing i would like to have is uh, like complete like zero bloat almost zero bloat maybe and yeah. uh, zero dead tuples and uh, there is also a thing like we can do it actually if we if for downtime we could do it with vacuum full but we agreed that we ex exclude this option so we should run pg pack and um, for indexes, it's uh, well, all situations are different, right? So we might see that uh, we don't have enough time to do everything, right? In this mm -hmm. case, probably I would just take care of indexes first of all, uh, accept some uh, some bloat and that tuples. Well, that tuples maybe not, but bloat maybe yes. And also, if we have partitioning, uh, we could just. Uh, play with partitions, or like some rotation or something, insert new data, new partition, and just uh, pr like get rid of old partition, just drop it, and that's it. Well, it depends. Mm -hmm. But in general, I would like to see zero bloat, zero dead tuples, and uh, uh, visibility maps updated. And also, mm, in some cases, I don't know the particular situation. Maybe some writes are still happening, right? And AutoVacuum does multiple, does many uh, things uh, it has ma multiple goals uh, get rid of that tuples it's one goal uh, to keep visibility map updated it's another goal and visibility map has uh, two bits for each page right not only uh, all visible but also all frozen and who knows maybe some writes will trigger to vacuum to be, to be uh, running in transaction id wrap around so it would be probably good to, to do vacuum analyze uh, freeze as well to to mark all frozen bits for each page in visibility maps. And finally, recollect stats, but it's analyzed part for our explicit vacuum. So uh, we have a fresh statistics in PG statistic, right? So all these things are good. Maybe one more like as desert, desert like, uh, like let's add one more thing on top of it, like cherry on our, on our cake uh, cluster. PG Repack supports, yeah. Uh, yeah, we can reorder, if we do it anyway, we keep the table, we can reorder, define specific physical order of uh, of tuples, live tuples. I, I, I was about to say dead tuples. No, no, we got rid of them. So live tuples, if they, we, we can choose a specific order, but just one, of course, just one. And some queries will be super fast because they will deal with fewer buffers because they will get be getting data in proper order fewer bu buffers touched they would be super fast and we can afford it if we repack yeah absolutely if, if you're familiar with other databases this is what people often call index organized tables right. and it makes a lot of sense if there's a chance like for example i think a lot of these these the examples i've seen of these are often quite time series heavy uh, use cases there's a chance your data will already be ordered so if if it is if you've been able to insert it in order then um inserting your new data overnight or whenever you do it in an ordered fashion is also a way of potentially potentially getting that clustering without having to do a very heavy uh long uh process so yeah, inserting it, making sure it ends up in order is the is right. feels and like since a good we don't goal. have deletes, updates, or inserts, so we know that it won't won't change during the day. So yeah, for the state is frozen. It's, it's perfect situation. Yeah, which uh, this so reminds yeah, I've got reminds us uh, Brin indexes. We also had an episode, yes. right? Right. Okay. Well, I wanted to bring up Brin indexes because I think this might be another benefit that we have here i think it might be that we so i know we've talked about brin indexes and some of the benefits that have come in 
was it Postgres 15 or 14? Um, Something, 14 yeah. maybe. Um, but one of the downsides of Brin indexes is that they degrade um, as they as data gets updated. In our and case, they don't, but also exactly. uh, they are slower than B3, so probably you don't need them because we... We don't want to improve uh, update performance, so I would still choose B3 again. Well, it depends, right? Like, if they also are much, 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 much smaller. So don't, if they we don't have, spam our caches, right? Exactly. If mm -hmm. we have a huge data set and RAM, RAM's expensive, right, there might be some Yeah, several trade-offs here. Uh, hard to say. But, in, uh, right, but I all I meant is that in general day-to-day thinking maybe you don't think of brin indexes that much but if you're in this case maybe you can think of it a little bit more as, as something that's an option to you um and the other index type that i wanted to bring up along those lines is another one that's expensive to up well so it is one that's expensive to update which is gin indexes so right. because we don't have these updates um i guess being i didn't i wasn't considering that it would have to be online the whole time so eventually we are going to have to update it or Drop and recreate it's collecting it. pending po pending list and so, so on. Like we we definitely can tune our gene indexes uh, to benefit from a redundancy situation. It's a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I lost you. Sorry, I lost you there briefly. Yeah, that's strange. I'm looking at pings. Uh, didn't lose any. Just one was. 200 milliseconds instead of 30 milliseconds. That's it. Strange. Pings are fine. <laughs> Back to gin indexes. You make a good point that we could tune, we can make sure that the overhead, well, the overhead would be overnight, right? It would be while we're doing our updates, not during the day. So read performance is still good. Right. So, yeah, yeah definitely we can benefit from read only state. Mm hmm. One other, so a couple of things I had questions for you on. If, if I remember, so the spending lists, and I quickly checked right now, fast update option. The thing is that uh, we mm, we want uh, everything be already in place, uh, so we don't want to have additional lookups internally for selects. So we can say selects. The speed of selects is most most important for us. Updates can be slow. It's fine. So we make proper choices when we create a gen index or rebuild it, and that's it. So it's possible. Yeah. So and my understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my understanding is that that won't make all updates slow, but it will make some updates extremely slow. Right. Right. Um, when when we reach yeah. uh, pending list is reached like by default, if, if I remember, it's four megabytes. So yeah, it's 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 not good to. I can't to, remember. Yeah. I had issues with it in some cases. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not fun. We have some blog posts we could. Share. In fact, actually, there's one that I mentioned. Uh, I was going to mention earlier by Haki Benita that that talks about the loading data in a sorted fashion. And there's a good one by I think Lucas Fittle, um talking about the gin update. So I'll link up both of those in the but show notes. It's too well. it's too fine tuning to me. I still like this. Uh, what we discussed. Uh, All right. Order Let's go of backwards. tuples. Yes, order of tuples. And fully vacuum state, uh, yeah. up to date visibility maps, zero risks that auto vacuum start working at, at some time. Also, like we don't want to, it to be working during our daytime at all. It's perfect. So, thinking back to other, like what are the things that Postgres does um, that that are kind of update or write dependent? One of them is all of the stuff around backups and. Um, being safe in terms of a crash or in terms, you know, the, all of those let's, features. Let's finish with hip, hip, hip fetches yes, because okay. it's so important. Uh, we we discussed like visibility maps, all, all visible, uh, all pages are marked all visible. Mm -hmm. And it means that uh, our index only scans will be as fast as possible because they will have hip fetches zero in plans. When we look at plans, we see hip fetches non-zero. It means that um, index lookup was already not index only. Heap uh, was inspected to ensure about visibility. But if our visibility map is up to date, 
no no writes to happen to table it means that uh, heap fetches is zero it means the index only scans will be super fast and in this case i would check my queries and rewrite them to use index only scans as like everywhere where i can sometimes you need to mm, to use index only scan quickly and then you already fetch separately like using like with as materialized so materialized CT with like uh, plan fencing or somehow else but you just want to find rows using index only scans and then you can already read all columns you need uh, from it uh, and so on so i would check all the plans and ensure that i use index only scans as much as possible and heap fetches are indeed zero this is super important and uh, like uh, some uh, spoiler i will consider this as probably number one thing i would like to have in overall in overall our discussion like uh, hip fetch zero and index only scans yeah awesome there's a couple of other things in terms of queries that you can do to favor index only scan like just checking that you do need all the columns that are being requested if you yeah. like there's something, especially if you're using an ORM or something, that can really lead to all columns being requested when actually only a few are needed for the This is what I, meant, I was yep. meaning, yeah. Or, or if you do need these columns, okay, include them to 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 have cover in the index and to have it in index. Yeah, or even, even just a straight up multi-column index. Um, so I would fight, I would fight hard to have single index only scan in yeah. most critical queries. Yeah. In this case, I know this is the best performance Postgres can, aff- can uh, give me. Right. So here's an, like here's a related topic, um, and an, uh, I've got two more for you. This one is materialized views or pre-aggregation in general. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it don't, they don't have to be materialized views, right? It could just be that we load the data in this, like we we aggregate before even loading but Which has to in a broader meaning right? yeah exactly the, the, the point with is index it's only not going to change exactly on it. so it helps with index only scans right because if you have data in two tables and you get a materialized view uh, like yeah, we talked yeah. about this before right you can it, you can now index on columns across multiple tables by like, yeah i i want i know this. you wanted to go to like uh, dba low level stuff like backups and so on. let's let's do it sl- slightly l- later this yeah. is great topic like okay it's a lot of, we can uh, uh, as one of my old customers told me uh someday i love materialized use but they feel like huge like hammer and you try to like with with uh, like jewelry like so sometimes it doesn't work uh too fine so imagine if you created a lot of materialized to use prepare them uh, created indexes on them have uh, index on the scans but mm-hmm. then my question is what's the state or your of your buffer pool and uh, file cache is it good because you started to keep the same data multiple multiple times like many times the same records basically if you have denormalized the situation and probably uh, you need uh, more memory to keep because you have more pages uh, and this kind of a bloat as well uh, because like you could do much better if you avoid materialized use for example right. maybe it depends I don't know the uh, there is no single answer here right? it but depends what, what you I think it depends a little bit on on the number of similar queries that are hitting you like if you if you have like a a dashboard that is having like the same things being asked of it over and over again. That's one thing. If you allow people to set all different filters and they could be sliced in the data in any way they like completely custom, maybe Indexes there's like a, well. a different trade off. Indexes. Oh yeah. Be. But what I'm, what I mean is if you don't allow that much customization, maybe you materialize everything and own and only load that data. So, uh, I, in some cases, probably I would choose materialized views, but uh, I would uh, think twice, maybe even more, like three, four times do I need them. Because what I would do, I, I would try to understand what's what my working set during day, yeah, how perfect. much uh, bytes of memory, mm-hmm. gigabytes, 
terabytes. I don't know how much uh, memory I really need. And probably I would try to use uh, in reality a PG buffer cache extension to inspect the current state of the uh, of the buffer pool of our shared buffers and understand what indexes are currently loaded, uh, how much of them, and uh, same for tables. And from there, also checking cache uh, buffer pool efficiency from PGStat database and monitoring, everyone should have it. I would ensure that efficiency is more than 99%. So at least two nines we, had, we should have there. And in this case, it's good. Like, okay, we have, like, we, uh, have space. We have uh, buffer pool big enough. We have room for materialized view, right? Because well, yeah, and the, the main reason I wanted to bring it up was not that I thought it was necessarily a great idea. It's more that we don't have one of the big downsides in this use case. We don't have the fact that the, the data goes stale. So it, it just opens up that possibility that they might be a better idea than they would be generally. Mm -hmm. But this is super important to understand the content of the buffer pool and probably the page cache and understand how um, mm -hmm. how many pages are going to be evicted because they don't have enough uh, space in the buffer pool. Yeah. Because when it needs to be evict evicted, uh, we have contention issues. For example, in Postgres 9.5, 9.6, uh, it was a lot of work done specifically for... Uh, select only workload, read only workload, and I remember uh, excellent small post from Alexander Korotkov, uh, where when he was working with, by the way, my SQL people from Percon and so on, like towards one million TPS on one machine. It was long ago, like eight. We've years shared maybe. it before. I'll, I'll link it up yeah, again. Yeah, it's though. great, and because it, it shows exactly how we can also run PG Bench easily mm -hmm. with uh, select only prepared transactions and so on but so the, the prepared statements so the thing is that like we mm, this shows that contention possible not only when we change data right it's possible in read-only state as well and i would try to minimize it and uh, to yeah. keep our working set as stable as possible uh, in our buffer pool ideal situation we have a lot of memory our database is very small it's enough well, there will be a different question about cost optimizations from our uh, non-technical people, probably financial people and so on. But uh, in, in this case, we are good. We can afford a couple of more materialized views and, and so on, right? But uh, in reality, we usually don't have enough memory. Database is quite big and we try to optimize, uh, optimize it. In this case, uh, I would uh, try to keep in buffer pool as much as possible of, of our working set and materialized use are our enemies in this case in this uh, case right they increase the, the demand for memory yeah i, ha I had this one more topic i had one mm -hmm. more topic that i wanted to run past you on the query performance side and that was again thinking about what like some of the downsides of lots of um like a high high churn of our data and that's replication. Can, can we afford more replicas or like more geo-distributed replicas to get data closer to end users in this workload where we don't have as many, like where, where during the day there's just, we don't have to worry about lag at all. You know what I like about sharding? It's because like if we have shards and each shard has one or two better two standby nodes, it's so much better compared to situation when we have 10 standby nodes and we spend not only disk space, but also a lot of RAM to store the same data many, many times just mm -hmm. to scale reads. It's so inefficient when you need many, many standby nodes. It's like you you spend a lot of money in just to store. It's again like, too redundant storage in terms of not storage like i mean uh, temporary storage of memory so i don't like uh, to have a lot of uh, standby nodes but sometimes we do need it and again in the context of uh, materialized use they will since we supposed to use physical replication we will need to store them on all nodes and occupy uh, to pay for memory many times so I, you see, I don't like materialist use actually. Right? <laughs> so, it, of I've, course, I've it noticed. That I've I've, I've yeah. sensed a, a pattern. Uh, but what about the idea of reducing latency globally? Like some of these use cases, we're in the same country. Like the like the UK COVID dashboard. Probably most of their traffic was coming from the UK. 
And ah, you, I, I, I understand what probably you trying to say. If we have read-only state during daytime, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. our replication is small, like, and we can bring servers closer to user, read-only state, perfect situation. We even exactly. if latency. If latency distance is big, uh, we don't care because uh, it's already data is already there. That's a good point. Good point. Like edge computing almost, right? Yeah, well, exactly. I know we're again paying for RAM in multiple places, CPU in multiple places, but it feels like maybe that's a trade off you'd be more willing to take because you don't have that, um, well, the normal issues there. Yeah, so we should use uh, this. Uh, remember this project uh, which runs Postgres right in browser. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> yeah so using using web assembly and virtual machine inside it, and so on. like it's it's. Um, yeah. Or even something like Extreme. Yugabyte, right? Yeah, That's so cool. it's it's valid point and uh, uh, definitely worth considering, like uh, bringing like uh, regional. Uh, case and for example like i remember uh, aws aurora with its global database idea like read only clusters and so on mm -hmm. in this context and makes more sense but what did you want uh, to tell me about backups well do we need them like do we like we've got we can have a daily one for example as part of that nightly ah well do yes we need anything so, so more than that so I would keep them, but uh, there is a, a setting I don't remember from top of my head, but this setting is responsible for, uh, it's like archive timeout maybe. So the setting says, even if wall um, 16 max by default, even if it's not filled yet, on this timeout, archive it. In this case, of course, uh, if, if you know there are no many writes and we don't need a huge recovery time, probably we should, uh, we should, uh, uh, make it less frequent not like one hour for example right so so we we archive walls less frequently and also well, but worth remembering some selects can lead to writes and can they can write to some wall and so on but if we vacuumed everything and uh, we propagated uh, um, uh, uh, everything to replicas val log hints log val log hints right there is such uh, hint bits to uh, hint, if our hint, hint bits on standby nodes are also like have everything from the primary in this case we should be good and indeed we can archive uh, less frequently but I think it's it's a small question it's just a matter of uh, space occupied in backups uh, I don't think we will notice uh, uh, the overhead performance overhead uh, happening from archive command working. It's not like checkpoint or auto vacuum. Well, usually. should we move on to what about checkpoints? Then what would you do with those? Well, checkpoints. I, I think if uh, writes are not happening at all, we don't care. We we can keep default settings, which are not every good. five minutes or. I don't care. So if if everything like not. if all buffers are clean no dirty buffers at all almost no like it's it won't, it won't be noticeable it yeah. it becomes noticeable only when writes are happening and uh if you remember checkpoint tuning uh, we discussed a lot how to tune for heavy writes if we well, don't I, have well i was thinking writes, we exactly i was thinking we could therefore make it like a lot less frequent but it doesn't matter yeah it doesn't, really doesn't matter exactly doesn't matter if yeah, we nice. checkpoint uh, with very few dirty buffers it will be mm -hmm. very fast and that's it. So checkpoint is, and auto vacuum. We already discussed if we do vacuuming every, and even if we do freezing ourselves, in this case vacuuming won't trigger. That's it. Right. What about the overnight process? Should we get to that? Yeah, this is where things start to become less uh, uh, good looking because we yeah. probably don't have a lot of time to vacuum freeze analyze or whole our database verbose i would probably include to see the details about the process mm -hmm. in this case we need to make decisions uh, having trade-offs and wait we waiting both uh, or maybe sometimes multiple uh, choices and choosing the best one for example we might uh, uh, say okay we don't have time to rebuild uh, and to repack our table using some clustering or we do it infrequently or probably we even don't touch some indexes it depends so it depends on how strict how narrow our window to apply 
changes is. But uh, I would definitely consider partitioning here because uh, in this case we have more control and data locality and so on, and more control in but also in terms of uh, how much work will be needed for a vacuum. Because if you have huge table, you just you know like okay, we update ten percent of our huge table, which is ten terabytes every night. For example, okay, you will need okay ten percent means one terabyte. Probably it's too much for a few hours, but anyway. We don't know in to which pages our updates will go, right? It's distributed, who knows how. And in this case, we don't have control. But if it's a partition table, we discussed it very recently, we insert new data to new partition or deal with fresh partitions. We have some very already like in frozen state old partitions. We touch them very rarely. In this case, a uh, vacuum works much faster. Rebuilding, we don't need to rebuild everything. We need to rebuild particular indexes and, he and tables also. It, partitioning is our friend here, unlike materialized views. <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Maybe materialized views are not that bad, but I just... Uh, they are outdated, the approach Postgres currently has. Uh, we uh, live in time when we need m much more powerful materialized views already, and there are projects that exist trying to solve it, but yeah, I wish we already ha have had it everywhere so, inside Postgres. In terms right. of that, you, you mentioned like having a deadline or having like a certain compressed period of time where we needed to do, maybe we don't have like that a long. couple of hours, for example, our yeah. window. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting point because some of the things I was thinking, I'm not sure they apply anymore if we uh, because we've we've said we need to think about zero downtime. Except, could we do like if you uh, like blue green deployments, so we could have one cluster live or and then switch branches, to a, maybe branches. Yeah, or how, whatever you want to call it, where you flip the connection so that we could have been doing all this data in a in well, a blocking partitioning uh, can provide this already. Uh, for some cases, partitioning you just create new partition. You 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 can switch to reading from it when you you already filled it. Why not? No, like it's almost blue green or something. Yeah, it's like in PGQ, like that. in PGQ, three partitions. One is already like one is uh, running right now. It's being used right now. Another is uh, uh, we are working on it. And mm -hmm. third one we use it recently, and we will be processing it soon. So the rotation of partitions. This is like for from queuing in Postgres uh, approach used by Skype in PGQ. And uh, we could do similar thing here. And it's similar to like blue, green or bar branching and so on. But if you have branching, for example, new one, you, ca you can use them. Or, uh, or if you have, if you install database lab engine on production, uh, if you, if you're okay for, with using ZFS there, or you, like you can implement it with hardware as well. Uh, in this case, so you can have branches, but uh, uh, it's like we, we, can just have some rotation here, right? Why not? But what I wanted to say also, mm, here I would tune checkpoints. So go on. Yeah, one of trade-offs we want to make here, we probably want to generate less uh, wall pages. Uh, so having less frequent checkpoints would be good. Distance increases, uh, a fewer uh, full page writes inserts are happening. And uh, but uh, the price we pay here is longer uh, restore time after crash, right? So I would increase max wall size a lot, checkpoint timeout a lot, like 30 minutes uh, max wall size, like 100 gigabytes, uh, checking free disk space definitely, maybe even more. And we know if we crash, we will be in recovery like 10, 15 minutes. It's okay. Well, and it doesn't like it doesn't matter right because we're already it depends on the case yeah true know. yeah yeah true. i don't know maybe it matters if people continue using it and we are down for 15 minutes maybe it's not acceptable but if we can so, afford this risk if we say okay our restoration time 15 minutes is fine in this case we say like checkpoint timeout 30 minutes maxwell size 100 gigs again some i provide some arbitrary numbers yeah. they should be tested for particular situation but then we uh, produce fewer wall records, our uh, intensive writes performance is better, uh, then other choices. 
Maybe I should drop indexes before when I do. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what I was thinking about the blue green. Like we can't put, we probably can't drop indexes um, uh, before we insert if, we, if, if we're keeping new partition. Recap. Why not? We can create them after we insert it. The yeah. Data. That's the blue green idea. The, the, doesn't the partitioning have the same issue for you as the materialized views though? Like in terms of buffer cache. Uh, this is new data, right? Sorry. So yes. Yeah, so you're saying put just the new data into the rest. You it doesn't have. It's not original source of data. It relies on tables, and just copies transforming somehow and copies the same data. It's der derivative, right? I completely misunderstood yeah. what you how you meant. You were using partitioning. You meant like basically new partition per day makes sense. For example, yeah, yeah. All cool. we, we all, or we can have like seven partitions, and when Monday starts, we reuse old Monday's partition. For example, yep. or have rotation depends. I don't know like the particular case, and we can design something, or just use time 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 scale, and and that's it. Yeah. But the idea is that partitioning uh, is super beneficial because uh, we again like vacuum. We have data locality. Data already stored uh, in more compact way, less sparsely. Yeah. So probably we even don't need to, to apply clustering or like re it's called cluster, but it's reordering, right? And PGRPack has this uh, option to cluster data. So maybe we even don't need it because we know all fresh data is one partition already, da daily partition. Uh, vacuum is faster. Indexes under control. We don't need to rebuild whole index. We build just index on our partition. All others yeah. already like are good. And pages, visibility maps are good. Index behavior is good for all partitions. If tomorrow we will be using yesterday partition, we still keep it, but it's kind of frozen state. So it's it's quite good. We like definitely it. have uh, quite a lot of stuff to to use for optimized case here so with maximal One size more. and checkpoint time, timeout can be changed then uh, without restart when we prepare for bulk updates do bulk updates without uh, indexes or with as few indexes as possible and recreate indexes or create them afterwards adjust to a checkpoint timeout at maximal size to move faster to produce uh, less wall and to put uh, less pressure on backup and replication systems and on disk of course what else Maybe drop constraints before ha before doing the inserts. Maybe, but uh, depends again. Like uh, if we do see or triggers, if we do see some uh, overhead from them, yeah, worth considering. But uh, creation them also takes time, right? Yeah, it's worth testing both, right? Like t test without and test if, with. And if it's new partition, if it's like blue green approach, if we create new partition, nobody is yet uh, reading from it. Uh, we um, we can block it and create indexes without concurrently. True. A part yep, and I like that. constraints as well. We we know it's already big. Like okay, we have like ten gigabytes uh, partition, but we know nobody is using it yet. So we can move faster and regular create indexes like roughly two times faster when create index concurrently. And same with partitions, we don't need not valid and then validate two phase mm -hmm. creation. We can just create it blocking this partition, not not taking into account others at all before yeah. we open the gates to it. One last idea from my side. If we can't afford to do all maintenance every night, we could stagger it, right? Like we don't have to do the same every night. We could do one like uh, one large, uh, or the you know, um, a section of them on Mondays, a section of them on Tuesdays, a section on Wednesdays. Oh. Like we, we yeah, can split it however you want. Or also maybe some actions can be uh, like we can uh, avoid duplicated uh, actions and do it less often as well. So, so instead of changing something every day, we change it once per week. Although yeah. everything else is changing, is like. We have daily partitions, blah, blah, blah. but something is changed only once per week just to avoid. Uh, I don't know. It, it's like some fantasy. <laughs> so, so like well, we, I guess it depends on the use case, right? But all I right. meant is in terms of maintenance, it's so, like if you get rid of bloat once per week, it doesn't mean you have to do a lot of work once per week. It could be you do a little bit of work. Yeah, for day. example, recreate some table, yes. repack it uh, only like once per week. Yeah. 
extra. And then extra. we know we accumulated some changes and like some bloat and so on. It's like an order changed and we do uh, bigger change, bigger process. process. We process it in, in a more he in heavier way just once per week. It's also some optimization yeah. considering trade-off we have. But in yeah. ideal world, we have enough time to uh, to insert our data and to say vacuum uh, all, repack. Repack everything, all tables, all indexes with clustering and then uh, uh, run vacuum uh, without full, without full. Vacuum analyze verbose freeze on whole database. Nice. And in the end, we have a quite ideal state and that's it. And I would return Maxwell size just in case, not to keep it very, very big. But maybe dynamic play with Maxwell size and checkpoint timeout is it's not that needed. Maybe we can keep it quite large for all the time. Brilliant. Did you have anything else? Uh, I don't think so. I no. It's, it's enough. We already, like we designed some, brainstormed some project here, I guess. Yeah, well, I hope it was helpful whoever requested this and it was definitely interesting for us in terms of thinking it through. Um, Maybe last thought. Uh, I like the, all, all I explained comes from my experience, but I never saw such case when I can afford dealing with like whole database like that. Usually we have only part of database behaving mm -hmm. in, described in this pattern. But like, so additional uh, question would be, if only some of tables behave like this, what to do? But it's there. Things become much more complex because uh, trade-offs becomes harder and so on. I'd say that becomes much more normal, though. I, I think this one's normal, interesting. Right? Yeah, this one's interesting, and I'd be really interested to hear from anybody that does maintain a system like this. And is it, if there's anything we've forgotten or anything we've missed that you do that it, that is good in this situation, it'd be great to hear. Coronavirus database in Great Britain, for example. Right? Yeah, and I've yeah, and I think a lot of case. government uh, data in many countries it's quite static, and it's been think, refreshed, so it's yeah should be popular. Some huge data sets get done like this, like geographic ones, um, spatial yeah. ones. There's all sorts um, that I've seen that only get a refresh once per day. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you for the idea. Yeah, and absolutely. Th 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 think thanks uh, to our. Mm, listener who gives this idea yeah and thank you Nikolai thanks everyone for listening see you next week thank you bye bye